Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Tumors of the Skin. We will talk about uh, introduction, biology of tumors, and some definitions. The biology of tumors, there are benign tumors and malignant tumors. The benign tumors usually uh, uniformly in appearance of the tumor cell nuclei. Uh, and uh, the malignant tumors, uh, of course, the malignant or epithelial tumor, it doesn't respect dermoepidermal junction. It invades the derms. So uh, there is a typicality of the tumor cell nuclei, pleomorphism, and anaplasia. So the, there is uh, anaplasia, atypia, pleomorphism. Anaplasia, atypia, pleomorphism. The anaplasia, the, the, anaplasia, uh, the nucleus is large, irregular, and hyperchromatic. And there is the atypia increased mitosis and the pleomorphism, the variation in appearance of nuclei of the same cell type. So the atypicality of tumor cell nuclei, there is pleomorphism, variation in the appearance of the nuclei in the same cell type, the anaplasia, atypical appearance of the nuclei, which is large, irregularly shaped and hyperchromatic, and also there is uh, maybe atypical mitotic figures. The uh, in the benign tumor, the architectural uh, order uh, uh, in arrangement of tumor nuclei, there is the architectural, uh, it's in order, but the architectural disorder in the arrangement of nuclei occurs in the malignant tumor of the tumor cell nuclei with loss of polarity. The benign tumor, slow growth, the malignant tumor, rapid growth, and benign tumor, no metastasis, and the malignant tumor, of course, there is potential metastasis. Carcinoma in situ, in situ pre-malignant, it does respect the, uh, it's only in the epiderm, it respects the dermoepidermal junction. So this is the uh, differences between the benign tumor, malignant tumor, and carcinoma in situ. The benign tumor, uniform in appearance of tumor cell nuclei, architectural order of the arrangement of tumor nuclei, slow growth, no metastasis. The malignant tumor, there is a typicality of uh, the nuclei, anaplasia, atypia, and pleomorphism. Pleomorphism is the variation of uh, uh, appearance of nuclei of the same cell type. Anaplasia, atypical appearance of nuclei, large, irregular, and, and, and hyperchromatic, and uh, maybe uh, atypical mitotic figures. The, there is architectural disorder in the arrangement of tumor cell nuclei with loss of polarity, and there is rapid growth, growth and uh, potential metastasis. The uh, malignant tumors doesn't respect the derm epidermal junction. It inverts, invades the derms. But the carcinoma in situ, pre-malignant, in, uh, it, uh, uh, in epiderms, it is in epiderms, it, it does respect the derm epidermal junction. As we can see in this figure, the normal, the, to the left, architectural order arrangement and typical nucleus. And in the, uh, in the right, the malignant, there is this uh, order of uh, arrangement and loss of polarity and atypicality of nuclei, which is hyperchromatic, anaplasia, and uh, atypia mitotic figures. And uh, here we, uh, there is slow growth and here rapid growth. Here is no metastasis and here is, uh, here is uh, uh, possible metastasis. Uh, there is also some definitions. Hyperplasia is the lesion composed of excess of fully differentiated components. So hyperplasia mostly increases in size. It is composed of excess fully differentiated components. The nevus, when used alone, it is a tumor composed of nevus cells, like nevocellular nevus, melanocytic nevus, pigmented nevus. But nevus with an adjective, this means at birth. So it's dating since birth. Composed of mature structures, Continuous hamartomas like nevus sebaceous, nevus verrucosa, verrucus, nevus flamus. Hamartoma is a tumor like lesion but not non, -neoplasm, non neoplastic, composed of tissue normal for the body but inappropriate for the site, or abnormal mixture of tissues, usually com uh, uh, of the tissues usual component. Broadly nevoid anomaly. So the hamartoma is either normal tissue in abnormal site or unusual mixture either normal tissue and abnormal site or unusual mixture of tissues. The epithelioma is tumor of epithelium, benign or malignant, provided that a qualifying adjective is added. It seems um, 
best to be benign epithelial tumors with little or no tendency for metastasis. So epithelioma, usually benign tumor of the epithelium. Uh, it refers usually to this. Carcinoma in situ precancerous tumor. Uh, the carcinoma in situ or precancerous tumor is squamous cell carcinoma grade uh, half. The microscopic changes uh, uh, intact dermoepidermal junction. It respects the dermoepidermal junction. It's only in the epiderms. The carcinoma is malignant epithelial tumor invading the derms. So this is the differences of epithelioma or carcinoma in situ, precancerous tumor, and the carcinoma. And there is the nevus and the hamartoma and the hyperplasia. Here also we can see this figure. Nevus dating since birth, nevus an adjective. Tumor, it's a mass either benign, pre-malignant, or malignant. And this is a figure or earliest stages of epidermal neoplasm, such as actinic keratosis, arsenical keratosis, or Bounds disease. Now we will shift to the tumors of surface epiderms. The tumors of surface epiderms are either benign, precancerous, in situ, or carcinoma. The benign has no anaplastic cells, as we said. The precancerous, it has anaplastic cells, but respect their epidermal junction. The carcinoma, it is uh, anaplastic cells, uh, but it uh, uh, invades the epidermal junction with metastasis. The benign tumor, examples, seborrheic keratosis, keratoacanthoma, epidermal nevi, cutaneous cysts, warty disc keratoma, clear cell acanthoma. And the precancerous in situ, solar keratosis, precancerous leukoplakia, oral florid papillomatosis, bounds disease, and erythroplasia of kera or bounds disease of the glands. So the precancerous in situ, there is mostly the solar keratosis, 20%. And there is three around 10%, the other three. And uh, the most uh, uh, erythroplasia is kera, uh, of kera is 30%. So solar keratosis, 20%. Precancerous leukoplakia, about 10, yani 16 to 17%. Oral florid papillomatosis, 10%. Bounce disease, around 10, 5 to 10, or 5 to 12, uh, 11%. And erythroplasia of kera is 30%. Carcinomas like Paget's disease and squamous cell carcinoma. So the tumors of surface epithelium, either benign, precancerous, in situ, and carcinomas. The benign has uh, no anaplastic cells. The uh, precancerous in situ, it has anaplastic cells, but respect their epidermal junction, only in epiderms. The carcinomas, they have anaplastic cells, and, but with penetration of dermoepidermal junction and metastasis. Benign tumors, seborrheic keratosis, keratoacanthoma, epidermal nevi cutaneous cyst, warty disc keratoma, clear cell acanthoma. Seborrheic keratosis, keratoacanthoma, epidermal nevi cutaneous cyst, warty disc keratoma, clear cell acanthoma. Precancerous, in situ, solar keratosis, 20%. Precancerous, leukoplakia and oral floor lid papillomatosis, about 10%. Bounds disease, 10%, 5 to 11. And Erythroplasia of Kira, 30%. Carci uh, shift to the squamous cell carcinoma. The carcinomas like squamous cell carcinoma and Paget's disease. The uh, first benign tumor is the seborrheic keratosis. So we will talk about the seborrheic keratosis. We'll start about the benign tumors. Seborrheic keratosis, as we said, keratoacanthoma, epidermal nevi, and cutaneous cyst, warty disc keratoma, clear cell acanthoma. The first is seborrheic keratosis. Seborrheic keratosis or uh, uh, basal cell epithelioma, uh, it is a common benign epidermal tumor characterized by one or more sharply defined light brown to black, slightly raised lesions as if stuck on the surface. Most of them have soft velvety uh, or finely verrucous surface. Uh, maybe with keratotic plugs. Irritation of the lesion may lead to crustaceans and uh, inflam inflammatory base. Uh, the follicular uh, prominence is uh, one of the hallmarks of the seborrheic keratosis. So it is a common benign epi epidermal tumor characterized by one or more sharply defined 
light brown to black, slightly raised, raised lesions, uh, raised lesions as if stuck on the surface. Most of them have uh, soft, uh, soft velvety or finely verrucous surface with uh, keratotic plugs. Irritation of the lesion could lead to crustacean and inflammatory base. Sight mainly on the trunk, sometimes face extremities, with the exception of palms and soles. Age of onset, usually fourth or fifth decades. Uh, we will talk about the sign of Lissart Trela sign or sign uh, or uh, Lissart Trela sign. It is a sudden onset of large number of seborrheic keratosis, uh, usually uh, uh, on the trunk it is, and it is pruritic. So it is sudden appearance and rapid increase in size and number of multiple seborrheic keratosis. Sudden appearance and rapid increase in size and number of multiple seborrheic keratosis, usually pruritic and occurring uh, on any uh, body surface as a result of uh, internal malignancy. Abno uh, abdominal carci uh, adenocarcinoma, leukemia, and lymphoma, uh, it is a paraneoplastic syndrome. It's often associated with mal uh, malignant acanthosis nigricans in 35% of cases, and uh, these disorders may result uh, from tumor um, secreted growth factor. The course of the disease is often parallel with the underlying tumor because most of the uh, malignant tumors have uh, behaved aggressively, so the lifespan in patients with the sign of Lissartrela average about 10 years, 10 months, 10.6 months. So uh, the sign of Lissartrela or Lissartrela sign, it is a sudden appearance and rapid increase in size and number of multiple seborrheic keratosis, usually pruritic, occurs at any body surface, a result of internal malignancy, abdominal adenocarcinoma, leukemia, and lymphoma. So it is one of the paraneoplastic syndromes. It is often associated with malignant acanthosis nigricans, 35% of patients, and uh, uh, it is from tumor secreted growth factor. The course of the disease parallel with that of underlying tumor, sometimes it is 10.6 months. The eruptive uh, paraneoplastic signs, like eruptive skin uh, lesions within six months associated with internal malignancy, uh, Lissartrela sign, acanthosis nigricans, acquired ichthyosis, and hypertrichosis like lanuginosa acquisita. So the eruptive skin lesions within six months associated with internal malignancy or eruptive paraneoplastic signs, Lissartrela sign, acanthosis nigricans, acquired ichthyosis, hypertrichosis lanuginosa acquisita. This is the Lissartrela sign. The second thing is dermatosis papillosa nigra. It is a variant of seborrheic keratosis developing mainly in adult black individuals. It consists of small, smooth, pigmented papules, usually on molar area of the face and uh, neck and upper trunk, where some of the lesions are pedunculated. They are caused by an avoid developmental defect in pilosebaceous follicle. There is positive family history, so it is usually on uh, it's black and on the face. But the stucco keratosis is not pigmented and not on the face. It is distal, like feet and ankle. Uh, ankle. So the stucco keratosis, it is non-pigmented, grayish-white variant of seborrheic keratosis, symmetrically distributed on, in the, uh, on the distal portion of extremities, especially the feet and ankles. It's not on the, feet, the face. The histopathology of the seborrheic keratosis. There are pronouns hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, and papillomatosis. Pronounced hyperkeratosis, acanthosis due to upward extension of the tumor and irregular papillomatosis, which may lead to a church spires appearance. The lower border lies on straight line that can be drawn from the normal epiderms on the either side of the tumor. Intraepidermal horn cysts are present. Intraepidermal horn cysts are present either due to uh, focal keratinization or due to invagination of stratum corneum pseudo horn cysts. Two types of cells are seen in the acanthotic epiderms, normal keratinocytes and basaloid cells, which is small, and, uh, small with large nucleus resembling basal cells. There is variable increase in melanocytes. So this is the histopathology. We can see hyperkeratosis, acanthosis and papillomatosis with church spires appearance. And there is two types of cells in the uh, uh, epiderms, normal keratinocytes and basaloid cells. 
and there is intraepidermal horn cyst, either focal keratinization or pseudo horn cyst from invagination of the epiderms of the stratum cornea. The irritated seb sebaceous keratosis, numerous edges of keratinizing squamous cells st uh, simulating squamous cell carcinoma, but mitotic figures are rare and no cell invasion of the derms. So the irritated seb seborrheic keratosis, clinically there is examinative changes that can occur around uh, uh, and uh, on otherwise uh, typical seborrheic keratosis. And clinically, uh, this is clinically there is inflammation. And the, uh, also there is inflammation histologically. Um, uh, there is infiltrate and also uh, there is no mitotic figures or uh, cell invasion, but only keratinizing squamous cells, simulating uh, edges of keratinizing squamous cells, simulating squamous cell carcinoma, but no mitotic figures and no invasion of the derms. Also the melanoacanthoma, it's a rare variant of pigmented seborrheic uh, sebaceous keratosis with marked increase in melanocyte concentration. There is partial block in melanin transfer uh, and greater amount of melanin is present in melanocyte but absent in tumor cells. It's like pigmented uh, basal cell carcinoma. Also there is partial block of melanin transfer, uh, transfer and greater amount of melanin present in melanocyte but absent in tumor cells and considered as benign mixed tumor of melanocytes and keratinocytes. This is the melanoacanthoma. It's a rare variant of pigmented seborrheic keratosis with marked increase in melanocyte concentration. The treatment of seborrheic keratosis is removal with a sharp uh, curette and uh, freezing cryosurgery or trichloroacetic acid or cauterization. So we can, it's easy to remove the cryosurgery, uh, uh, electrodesiccation and curettage, laser, surgical excision, topical 5-fluorouracil and dermabrasion, but there is risk of hypopigmentation, hyperpigmentation and scarring. This is the treatment of seborrheic keratosis. This is the seborrheic keratosis, and we, see, we will see now the uh, clinical picture of seborrheic keratosis. As we can see here, this is a seborrheic keratosis, basal cell papilloma, like, like stuck on the surface. And here also, an old patient. You can see here this also an old patient with seborrheic keratosis. And Histopathologically, seborrheic keratosis, hyperkeratotic type, hyperkeratosis and papillomatosis, church spire appearance. And here we can see the seborrheic keratosis acanthotic type, acanthosis and horn pseudocysts. And this is the seborrheic keratosis reticulated type. And here you can see also seborrheic keratosis clonal type, horn pseudocysts and clones. And this is an irritated seborrheic keratosis where there is a cancerous squamous eddies and uh, lymphocytes. It is irritated and inflamed. Here is another picture of the Seborrheic keratosis, basal cell papilloma, showing papillomatous acanthotic epiderms consisting of basaloid cells. And here is a reticulated type of, and here we can see the clonal type, seborrheic keratosis. And this is a figure of inflamed seborrheic keratosis, inflamed seborrheic keratosis. Keratoacanthoma. Keratoacanthoma is a rapidly growing self-healing epidermal tumor that has striking resemblance both clinically and histologically to squamous cell carcinoma. Keratoacanthoma passes into three clinical stages, proliferative, mature, and involutional. So it's rapidly growing, self-healing, epidermal tumor, striking resembles clinically and histologically to squamous cell carcinoma. It passes into three stages, proliferative, mature, and involutional. There are, there are two types, solitary keratoacanthoma and multiple keratoacanthoma. The solitary keratoacanthoma, it's a skin, firm skin color to pink dome-shaped nodule 
with a, a, a horn-filled crater in its center. Usually reaches its full size, one to two centimeter within six to eight weeks, and involutes spontaneously in less than six months, with slightly depressed scar. So it is a firm skin colored. It's a firm skin colored dome-shaped nodule with a, a horn-filled crater or keratin-filled crater in its center usually reaches full size 1 to 2 cm within 6 to 8 weeks and involutes spontaneously within uh, 6 months with slightly depressed scar. Age usually more elderly, more than 45 years with, slight, with light skin colored uh, and uh, sex more in males 3 to 1. Site usually exposed areas, face, forearms, uh, dorsal aspect of the hands, uh, or subangual region, tender keratoacanthoma, not reported in palms and soles. The differential diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma by duration, induration, and lymph node. It's free, of course. Duration, induration, and lymph node. From uh, squamous cell carcinoma, um, uh, keratoacanthoma shows more rapid uh, ev evolution or uh, on previously normal skin, spontaneous healing, younger age of onset, also immunohistochemical staining, uh, patterns of involucrine uh, and keratin proteins can differentiate keratoacanthoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Multiple keratoacanthomas, there are uh, two types, multiple self-healing epitheliomas, Ferguson-Smith, and uh, uh, eruptive keratoacanthoma. Multiple self-healing epitheliomas uh, benign, uh, begins in adolescence, more in males uh, with positive family, uh, family history, autosomal dominant, and multiple 3 to 10 lesions simulating solitary keratoacanthoma. Eruptive keratoacanthoma it begins in adults, no sex predilication and no family history, uh, m multiple but mon many hundreds of small papules, two to three millimeter of follicular origin, usually itchy and healing occurs without scarring. Oral mucosa and larynx may be involved. This is the multiple keratoacanthoma, multiple self-healing epithelioma and eruptive keratoacanthoma, multiple self-healing more in males, positive family history, autosomal dominant, three to 10 lesions. The eruptive keratoacanthoma, it's eruptive, so no, no sex predilication, no family history, many hundreds, uh, uh, two, to mil, two to three millimeter follicular uh, origin, and heal without scarring. Oral mucosa and larynx may be involved. And this is also a clinical variants of the keratoacanthoma. Histologically, it's examined under low magnification, 10 or 25, large central keratin-filled crater. The epidermis extend like a shoulder or marginal uh, buttress over the sides of the crater. Irregular epidermal proliferation in the form of uh, pseudo-epitheliomatous hyperplasia extend downwards from the base of the crater uh, into the dermis. Uh, it resembles squamous cell carcinoma, but there is more keratinization given, giving the tumor glossy and isinophilic appearance. In the dermis, dense lymphocytic infiltrate frequently seen. Multiple keratoacanthoma uh, simulates solitary keratoacanthoma in histological appearance. By electron microscopy, there is numerous intracytoplasmic desmosomes as Bounds disease and squamous cell carcinoma. So this is the histopathology of the keratoacanthoma. The crater, keratin-filled crater, epidermal shoulders, sol shoulders uh, ground glassy appearance of cells, and pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia with no atypia and lymphocytes in the derms. Histogenesis. Keratoacanthoma arises from proliferation of pilar epithelium and its evolution and regression may simulate hair cycle. It is considered abortive malignancy that may only rarely progress to invasive squamous cell carcinoma. So it resemble, uh, resembles to hair cycle like growth, uh, anagen, catagen, and telogen involution. And also, the cell of origin is pilar epithelium hair follicle. Etiology, viral ge uh, genesis, not confirmed. So Exposure to tar and oil products, X-ray, pova, multiple keratoacanthomas, genetic predispos predisposition in most cases of multiple keratoacanthoma, autosomal dominant. 
So this is the etiology theories of viral sun exposure to tar and oil products X-ray in multiple keratoacanthomas and also genetic predisposition in multiple keratoacanthomas. And uh, the treatment like squamous cell carcinoma, excisional biopsy to exclude squamous cell carcinoma, better scarring, and unpredictable course of keratoacanthoma. Uh, curatage and cauterization of small lesions, 5 uh, fluorouracil intralesionally, radiotherapy, multiple keratoacanthomas, methotrexate, or oral retinoids. So the treatment, excisional biopsy, the best treatment is excisional biopsy to exclude squamous cell carcinoma, better scarring, and unpredictable course of keratoacanthoma. طلعت malignant, عرفت ما طلعتش malignant, better scarring. Curatage and cauterization of small lesions, 5 fluorouracil intralesionally, radiotherapy, multiple keratoacanthomas. So this is the keratoacanthoma. It's a rapidly glowing, growing self-healing epidermal tumor, striking resemble clinically and histologically to squamous cell carcinoma, proliferative, mature, and involutional, and it's firm color to pink dome-shaped horn with horn-filled uh, center, and um, uh, it uh, reaches full size within six to eight weeks and volute within six months with slightly depressed scar. As we can see here, th this is a picture of keratoacanthoma, and we see the resemblance also to squamous cell carcinoma here. And we see here this picture of keratoacanthoma. Mature keratoacanthoma. And regressing keratoacanthoma and this is giant keratoacanthoma this is also giant keratoacanthoma multiple keratoacanthomas and subangual keratoacanthoma We can see here the histopathology of keratoacanthoma, showing symmetric epithelial tumor with central necrotic center or crater surrounded by epithelial lipping. And also here we can see mature keratoacanthoma. This is another figure of Keratoacanthoma, histopathology, involuting with the proliferating fibroblasts and the papillary derms. And this is a keratoacanthoma low magnification with the epithelial lipping, keratin filled crater, and lymphocytes in the derms. And also this is keratoacanthoma high magnification with keratin filled crater and glossy squ uh, squamous proliferation. Now I remind you of the, the benign tumors of surface epiderms. We took the seborrheic keratosis, keratoacanthoma. Now we will talk about epidermal novi and cutaneous cysts. Epidermal novi, they are circumscribed hamartomatous lesions composed of keratinocytes. They present usually at birth or shortly after. The epidermal nevi, nevi so they are since birth or uh, shortly after, follows lines of blashko, usually warty on the trunk and linear on the extremities. So there are two types, the localized type nevus unitis lateris and the systematized type ichthyosis hystrix. Localized type uh, nevus unitis lateris, it consists of closely set verrucous papules, flesh colored or brown color, may be located anywhere, only on one side of the patient. On the extremities, it's longitudinal. On the trunk, it is usually uh, curved. Differential diagnosis from linear lesions uh, and uh, linear lesions like lichen planus, uh, linear uh, psoriasis, uh, lichen striatus, linear uh, derriere disease, etc. And uh, elven. Elven differs clinically by the presence of 
inflammation, erythema and pruritus, and histologically by the presence of inflammation and parakeratosis. So the elven uh, differs from the uh, uh, leaven by, uh, clinically by the presence of erythema and pruritus, histologically by uh, inflammatory infiltrate and parakeratosis. Uh, usually we ask, is it itchy or not? If it is not uh, itchy, so it is lichen planus or elven. If it, is, uh, if it is itchy, it is lichen planus or elven. It is uh, not itchy, it is lichen striatus. So it is not itchy, lichen striatus usually. If it is itchy, then it is either lichen planus or elven. We, uh, we ask when it did it start. If it is since birth, so it is elven. If it is not since birth, usually it will be lichen planus. This is a differential diagnosis of elven, uh, elven or um, uh, localized type, nevus unitus lateris. And systematized type ichthyosis hystrix. The ichthyosis hystrix, it is bilateral and symmetrical distribution of widespread linear lesions. Differential diagnosis from incontinentia pigmenti. And basal cell carcinoma and less commonly squamous cell carcinoma rarely develop in the epidermal nevi. There is association with congenital skeletal and CNS anomalies, mental retardation, epilepsy, usually in systematized epidermal nevus. Uh, so the epidermal nevi, either localized type nevus unitus lateris or systematized type. We can see here the figure of nevus unitus lateris, epidermal nevus affecting one half of the body. And also here we can see the elven inflammatory linear verrucous epidermal nevus with erythema and scaling. And this is the histopathology of the epidermal nevus showing hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, papillomatosis, and elongation of retiridges. And there is differentiation about that, that uh, uh, in this histopathology, words seborrheic keratosis and epidermal nevi, hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, and papillomatosis. The treatment, sometimes we use uh, uh, RBM laser. The nevus comedonicus, it is closely set, slightly elevated papules that have their center dark, firm, hyperkeratotic plug resembling a comedo. Nevus comedonicus usually has linear configuration, occurs as a single lesion, but sometimes it could be multiple bilateral linear lesions or lesions that randomly distribute rather than linear. Lesions may be present on poles uh, and soles also. Histopathology, each comedon is or comedo is presented by wide deep invagination of the epiderms filled with keratin. Treatment either by comedon extraction, retin A, salicylic acid, reassurance. Uh, the nevus comedonicus also, it is nevus, so it may be dating since birth or shortly after in childhood. You can see here figure of nevus comedonicus with closely set comedone-like papules. And this is the histopathology. Epidermal hyperplasia with increased number of sebaceous glands. And the comedo white deep invagination of the epiderms filled with keratin. Uh, the uh, cutaneous cysts, uh, and, uh, which is composed of epidermal cysts, Melia and steatocystoma multiplex, mainly and others. Uh, this is the uh, one of the uh, benign cutaneous epidermal tumors. The cutaneous cysts, first the epidermal cyst, which is the most common, or epidermoid cyst. It is a single or multiple, slowly growing, one to six, one to five centimeter in diameter, firm, round, intradermal, or subcutaneous tumor. Epidermal cyst is the most common type. It is single or multiple, slowly growing, one to uh, one to five centimeter in diameter, firm, round, intradermal, or subcutaneous tumor. They are most commonly seen in the scalp, face, neck, and trunk. Although most epidermal uh, cysts arise spontaneously in hair bearing area where uh, it may also relate to follicular infundibular, infundibulum, they occasionally form as a result of traumatic implantation of epiderms into the derms or subcutis in the palms as in barbers or soles. Rarely malignant transformation is reported like basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. So it is epidermal cysts, the most common type, single or multiple slowly growing 
1 to 5 cm in diameter, firm round intraepidermal subcutaneous tumor, usually on the face, scalp, neck, and trunk, spontaneously or traumatic implantation. Important is the Gordon syndrome, autosomal dominant, which is cutaneous lesions like multiple epidermal cysts with internal uh, polyposes and large uh, intestine which is precancerous 50% adenocarcinoma, and osteomas. This is the Gardner syndrome. The Gardner syndrome, autosomal dominant, cutaneous lesions, like multiple epidermal cysts, especially on the face and scalp, fibromas, dysmoid tumors, pigmented lesions on the ocular fundus, specific marker of the disease, increased incidence of other benign and malignant neoplasm of other systems. This is the cutaneous lesions. Intestinal polyposes of large intestine and GIT hemorrhage, about 50% of cases malignant transformation into adenocarcinoma, treatment total colectomy, and osteomas, with predilection for the membranous bones of the head. There is a note here that we, the differential diagnosis from Gardner syndrome and puts jugger syndrome, that intestinal, uh, that here we have epi multiple epidermal cysts, the cutaneous lesions, multiple epidermal cysts, and the, inter the um, internal polyposes uh, and large intestine with 50% uh, uh, malignant for transformation, adenocarcinoma. But in puts jugger syndrome, the cutaneous lesion is freckle like and intestinal polyposes in small intestine with two to three adenocarcinoma formation. This is the epidermal. Uh, cysts and for the uh, milia of course uh, first the histopathology the histopathology of epidermal cysts the wall of the cyst is composed of two epiderms squamous granular and horn cell, uh, cells so the wall uh, complete, uh, com uh, two epiderms with uh, squamous granular and horn uh, cells and here there is granular uh, cells uh, the uh, cyst is filled with horny material arranged in laminated layers. So there is laminated keratin in the center, uh, or, or the cyst is filled with laminated keratin, and the cyst is lined with uh, uh, epiderms with a granular layer, unlike the pilar cyst, which has no uh, granular layer. For the milia, multiple, firm, smooth, white papule, 1 to 2 mm in size, they may be primary medium, arise spontaneously on the face or uh, uh, in predisposed individual, or secondary milia in association with many dermatoses like bulla spinfigoid, uh, epidermolysis bullosa congenita uh, dystrophica, and um, porphyria cutinea tarda, lichen sclerosis atrophicus, etc., or after trauma like dermabrasion, laser, etc., so this is the, uh, and the histopathology simulate epidermal cyst. So it is, uh, the milia is multiple firm smooth white papules, one to two millimeter in size, either primary milia or secondary milia. The primary arise spontaneously on the face of exposed individual or secondary arise either association with other dermatoses or after trauma. Histopathology like epidermal cyst. Seatocystoma multiplex, it is a multiple small 1 to 3 cm diameter rounded moderately firm cystic nodules that are adherent to the overlying skin, inherited autosomal dominant, when punctured the cyst discharge oily or creamy fluid, site sternal region, axilla and scrotal area. So it is multiple small 1 to 3 cm in diameter rounded moderately firm cystic nodule adherent to the overlying skin and when punctured this discharge oily or cre uh, creamy fluid, inherited as autosomal dominant, it's in the, the side sternal region, axilla and scrotal uh, lesion. For the histopathology, the cysts are usually folded, and lining the cyst consists of homogeneous horny layer that produced irregularly into the lumen, there is eosinophilic cuticle, and the cysts frequently contain sebaceous gland or abortive hair follicle. It appears that differentiation uh, in the cyst wall of uh, seatostoma multiplex and the, the direction of sebaceous duct. So it is uh, uh, usually it is folded and the lining of the cyst has eosinophilic cuticle with uh, regularly uh, protruding into the lumen and the cyst is, uh, contains sebaceous gland or abortive hair follicle in its lumen. This is a picture of epidermoid cysts, dome-shaped protuberance of the skin, and histo histopathology epidermoid cyst, which is, has stratified epithelium with, with granular layer. 
and inside there is keratinous material arranged in laminated layers. So this is clinically, as we can see, the epidermoid cyst, and histopathologically, with the lining epiderms in containing granular layer, and uh, there is laminated keratin in the inside. Here, the trichelemal cyst or pilar cyst, which resembles the uh, epidermoid cyst, but usually occurs in the scalp clinically, and it differs histologically that it, it lacks the granular layer. As we can see here, this is the epidermoid cyst, the cyst lining with granular layer and laminated keratin, filled with laminated keratin. And this is the pilar cyst, where the cyst lining without granular layer and compact keratin and some calcification. And this is another picture of pilar cyst, no granular layer in the cyst wall and compact keratin inside the cyst. The milium, the primary here, one a picture of a primary milium. Steatocystoma multiplex, multiple yellow cystic lesions on the trunk. And histologically, sebaceous gland is present, present in, the, uh, in the cyst wall empty cyst and usually it is folded there is eosinophilic cuticle with irregular protruding irregularly into the lumen also this is histopathologically with the steatocystoma multiplex it is an empty cyst with lined with uh, this is the eosinophilic cuticle and sebaceous gland on the wall and also you can see here this is the high magnification the empty cyst and cellulated is in fully cuticle of steatocystoma multiplex cutaneous cysts there is the epidermoid cyst milia steatocystoma multiplex and pilar cyst or trichelemal cyst, dermoid cyst, eruptive villus hair cyst, bronchogenic and thyrogrossal duct cyst, cutaneous ciliated cyst, median raphe cyst of the penis, and eruptive villus hair cyst, and hydrocystoma, apocrine hydrocystoma. Uh, the uh, pilar cyst only we will talk here about it's clinically uh, like epidermoid cyst but uh, usually on the scalp and histopathologically it's the same but no granular layer. The hydrocystoma, the apocrine hydrocystoma, common translucent to bluish cyst usually occurs in the uh, eyelids or sometimes elsewhere and the cyst appears empty, histopathologically it appears empty because the fluid leaks out. The cyst lined with cuboidal or columnar epithelium with two layers. So the cyst appears empty with flu because fluid leaks out and the cyst is lined with cuboidal or columnar epithelium with two layers. This is the common apocrine hydrocystoma low magnification. We can see the empty cyst and, the, and the, we can see two layers of the columnar or cuboidal cells here also but here it's pigmented so there is pigmented sweat inside and this is high magnification we can see apocrine secretion and cilia and the two rows of the columnar or cuboidal cells So the trichelemal cyst or pilar cyst, it is keratin containing cyst. They are firm, smooth, round nodules occurring mainly on the scalp, indistinguishable from epidermal cyst. However, less common, autosomal dominant inheritance sometimes and easily inoculated. Uh, histopathologically, the wall resembles external ha hair root sheath, 
shows distinct palisading of peripheral layer and swelling of the cells close to the cystic cavity. The content of the cyst consists of homogeneous horny material. So it is show epithelial lining that lacks the granular layer and the uh, it's keratin containing cyst. And uh, there is compact keratin inside the cyst. The dermoid cyst, uh, rare congenital, uh, it is... Uh, it results uh, from se uh, sequestration of the skin along lines of embryonal closure. They appear as subcutaneous cysts, usually present at birth, commonly on the head, around the eyes, nose, and the neck. Lateral eyebrows. Histopathologically, in contrast to epidermal cysts, they are lined with epiderms that possess various epidermal appendages. So the lining epiderms contain various epidermal appendages. This is the dermoid cyst. As we saw first, the pilar cyst, no granular layer, pale keratin, and compact keratin inside the cyst. And here, this is the dermoid cyst. With the pilosebaceous unit here, obvious. Other, th other cysts, like villous hair cyst, as we can see here, with villous hair in size, inside, laminated keratin, and this is the villous hair cyst. And also, there is the thyroglossal cyst, thyroid follicle, cyst lying in germinal center, thyroglossal cyst, High magnification, pseudostratified columnar epithelium and cilia, a thyroid follicle, thyroglossal cyst, high magnification, and also there is the brachial cleft cyst, squamous epithelium, columnar epithelium, and lymphocytes, brachial cleft cyst, low magnification, and High magnification. You can see the globlet cells inside. And lymphocytes. Reminding again of the benign tumors of the epiderms, seborrheic keratosis, keratoacanthoma, epidermal nevi, cutaneous cyst, and now we will talk about briefly warty disc keratoma and clear cell acanthoma. The warty disc keratoma. Solitary elevated papular nodule with keratotic umbilicated center usually occurs in the scalp face and neck and occasionally sun exposed area, trunk, oral mucosa and clear cell acanthoma, solitary slow growing red crusted stuck on nodule on peripheral, with peripheral colored of scale on the legs usually. And here uh, the most important that the epidermal cells except the, uh, the basal cells appear clear because of the presence of large amount of glycogen due to absence of Phosphorylase. This is the histopathology. So the two other vortic disc keratoma and clear cell acanthoma. And we will see here histopathologically of the, the clear cell acanthoma, the warty disc keratoma and clear cell acanthoma, warty disc keratoma, cup shape in vagination of the acanthotic epiderms and acantholysis. Warty disc keratoma and clear cell acanthoma. Well circumscribed epidermal tumor with composed of clear glycogen rich cells. Clear glycogen rich cells. Here there is a note about the cutaneous horn. It is a non specific reaction pattern that appears as conical hyperkeratotic lesion of various sizes, and uh, different types of lesions can be seen at uh, its base. Like, we here have this differential diagnosis of uh, either uh, benign lesions like seborrheic keratosis, wart, uh, pre-malignant solar keratosis, and malignant squamous cell carcinoma. So the, the cutaneous whore could be benign, seborrheic keratosis, wart, or it could be pre-malignant solar keratosis or malignant squamous cell carcinoma. We can see here a picture of the cutaneous horn. 
Another note about pseudocarcinomatous hyperplasia or pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, it presents marked downward proliferation of the epiderms into the derms, simulating squamous cell carcinoma. Occurs in chronic proliferative inflammation and chronic ulcers. Chronic proliferative inflammation like uh, bromoderma, blastomycosis, pyoderma vegetans, like blastomycosis, like pyoderma and pemphigus vulgaris, and hydroidinized suppurativa. And chronic ulcers, example, burns, uh, uh, stasis dermatites, pyoderma gangrenosum, basal cell carcinoma, lupus vulgaris, scrofluroderma, gamma, uh, granuloma inguinal. The histopathology, it resembles schemas uh, cell carcinoma grade 1 or 2. There is irregular invagination of the derms by epidermal cell masses and strands of horn pearl formation. However, squamous cells are well differentiated, atypicals are min atypicalities are minimal or absent, and the epiderm uh, epithelial strands may be penetrated by inflammatory cells, a feature not seen in malignancy. And findings of the original disease could be found. So there is, it's well differentiated, no atypia, and there is inflammatory cells. So it re represents uh, marked downward proliferation of epiderms into the derm, simulating squamous cell carcinoma occurs in chronic proliferative inflammation, like bromoderma, blastomycosis, pyoderma vegetans, blastomycosis like pyoderma and pemphigus uh, vegetans, hydradenite suppurativa, chronic ulcers like burns, stasis, dermatitis, pyoderma gangrenosa, and basal cell carcinoma, lupus vulgaris, scrofluroderma, gamma granuloma inguinal, histopathology resembles squamous cell carcinoma grade one or two, irregular vagination of derms by epidermal cell masses and strands, also horn pearl formation, but squamous cells are well differentiated, no uh, uh, atypia, and uh, also uh, yeah, there is inflammatory cells, and also there may, might be the original disease uh, findings may be found.